Good morning to Premier Greg Selinger. Good morning to the opposition leader, Hugh McFadden. We welcome you both to CJOB 68. Morning, gentlemen. Good morning. Good morning you, you can to say you. good morning here. Good morning to you. You're kind of looking at each yeah. other going, who, who do we say first here? Um, I hope, gentlemen, that this is the first of several opportunities that we get to discuss and debate the issues facing our province as we examine you, the candidates, the parties, the platforms, the record, as we drive towards this October 4th uh, general election. We have plenty of time in this hour to talk. We'll take your calls later in the hour. And this morning, by poll three, this is the multi-billion dollar transmission line and converter station. We have two main lines transporting electricity from northern Manitoba to southern Manitoba and uh, into the United States. We have the Bipole 1 and 2 and the existing HVDC Interlake Corridor. We have that single converter station, uh, Dorsey, that the system is vulnerable to extensive uh, power outages, severe weather, major ice storm. So Bipole 3, and I think you both agree that we need to Bipole 3. The question is whether Bipole 3 should follow a path on the west or on the east side and costs, etc. So, Mr. Premier, why do we need Bipole 3? Why should it go on the west side? Well, I believe we're on a roll in Manitoba in terms of the economy, and I believe hydroelectricity is going to be a key to our future. So we have to get it built. We have to build it right. We have to build it so it has a really strong reputation in the export markets as a clean, green energy source. And uh, we're well down that road. There's just been a law passed in Wisconsin that classifies our new hydroelectricity as clean, green energy. They will not buy our old energy as a result of flooding in the 1970s. They will only buy our new energy if we do it right. So we have a once-in-a-life oppor time opportunity to build it right and protect our UNESCO World Heritage Site and keep a strong reputation for our hydroelectricity in our export markets. And uh, I can tell you, having been down in the United States, in both Minnesota and Wisconsin, there's lots of competition down there. There's uh, wind power people, there's uh, solar people, there's people with natural gas, all of whom would like to knock out Manitoba Hydro and get the contracts in those markets. And uh, they're watching what we do. And if we do it right, we'll be competitive. And if we don't do it right, uh, we'll lose those opportunities for the future. There's about $21 billion of revenue at stake here over the next 20 years. And we've just signed a $4 billion deal in Wisconsin. Uh, they'll take our new power. They won't take our old power. We've got to keep it clean. We've got to keep it green. We've got to get that premium price. And I know we can do it if we build it properly. Mr. McFadden, uh, he says that uh, for in order for the export to be successful to the United States, it has to be done uh, on the west side. What do you say about that? Well, firstly, I, I want to thank you, Richard, and the Superstation for hosting the discussion today. I think we all agree that Hydro is our most important crown corporation. Uh, we, all, we all agree this is a really important project for the future of Manitoba. Uh, and uh, what I would say is that uh, we all know the, that Manitoba Hydro for generations has provided all of us with reliable and low-cost energy. Uh, the hydro we know today was built up historically by the Duff Roblin Progressive Conservative Government, and it's been strengthened by successive premiers. Uh, the next big step in securing a strong Manitoba hydro is the construction of Bipole 3, and that's something that Mr. Selinger and I agree on. Uh, that major transmission line uh, will run from our northeastern generating stations down to Winnipeg. So the need for a third major line became clear in 1996. We had an ice storm at that time that knocked out the two uh, existing lines. And for the past 15 years, we've been waiting for this line to get built to protect our reliable system that we take for granted. Uh, by 2000, which was now 11 years ago, Hydro was ready to build down the east side route. Uh, but NDP political interference has set us back now by 11 years. Uh, as Hydro Minister and now Premier, Mr. Selinger has spent the last 11 years stalling the construction of this essential lifeline. And uh, the concern we have is that Mr. Selinger folded under pressure from American activists who have always opposed every hydro development. So rather than accepting the advice of hydro's engineers, Mr. Selinger has caved under pressure from our American opponents, and that's left hydro with no option but to take the far western route. Hydro reports show that Mr. Selinger's far west side route, which wraps around the city of Winnipeg, will cost every Manitoba family $11,748. It'll compromise the reliability of our system, it'll have no environmental benefit, 
and in fact may do environmental harm. So I really believe we need to take a different path. And what we are saying is, is that if we're given the opportunity, we'll do what Duff Roblin did with the floodway. We'll stand up to the critics, we'll take the advice of the experts, and we'll get the east side line built for the sake of, next, of the next generation. Mr. Premier. You know, the uh, argument that uh, they will cancel all the work that's been done and hundreds of millions of dollars of investment on building uh, the transmission line is a, a reckless argument and a foolish argument. If you take a look at the number uh, that Mr. McFadden has put forward, that $11,748 by 325,000 families, if we just take a second to do the math, take 11700 by 325000 you get $3.8 billion. The only way you can cut that much money out of the hydro budget, you've got to cancel the bipole because there won't be enough money to do it. You've got to cancel the converter stations, which are essential. 70% of our power right now goes through one converter station, and a converter station translates the power from direct current to alternating current, current that we can use in our homes and in our businesses. We need that converter station because right now, as Mr. McFadden said, we almost lost it in 1996. So the converter station is key. It has to be built. So the minute you have put that money together, you get $3.8 billion. You have to cancel the converter stations. You have to cancel the bipole. And then you have to find $600 million of selling off hydro assets to meet his number. So the number doesn't ad well, ad make any sense at all. Gentlemen, there's been a lot of numbers thrown out here. Exactly. Can somebody tell us what is the cost of the transmission line on the east side versus the west side? And can someone tell us the yes. total package here? Mr. Yes. Premier, yes. then Mr. Because, because of all the confusion on the numbers, Hydro went and got independent experts to look at the cost. And the cost for the uh, line is $1.26 billion. On the east side, it would be about $671 million for a, a difference of a half a billion. The converter stations are $1.82 billion. And then there's some uh, additional uh, electrode lines and collectors for $191 million. That's $3.28 billion. Everybody except Mr. McFadden acknowledges the need for the converter station. They're absolutely essential to providing domestic reliability and a reliability to our export customers. Before so the, difference, Mr. Before, the difference is a half a billion dollars. Before Mr. McFadden answers that question, have you done the math on what it would cost on the east side? Yes, uh, I just said the east side would be $670 million uh, dollars versus the west side $1.26 billion. The difference is about a half a billion dollars. All right, Mr. McFadden. Well, the, uh, the numbers that we are using are based on Hydro's internal documents. Uh, they're based on the sworn testimony at the Public Utility Board by Hydro officials and hours of testimony on the part of Hydro officials at committee. Uh, and what they show is that if you take the total cost of the West Side line, uh, $4.1 billion in capital plus line losses, which are in the hundreds of millions of dollars on an ongoing basis, you subtract the uh, cost of the, the last capital estimate for the East Side, and you divide by the number of Manitoba families who pay hydro bills, uh, that comes to $11,748 per family. What's your total we cost on this? What's the total cost well, on this? Well, the capital cost of the project is the, is the, are the numbers coming out of hydro, and the last internal estimate hydro generated was $4.1 billion for the total cost of the West Side line, and that doesn't include interest, it doesn't include added maintenance, and it doesn't include line losses, all which have to be added to that. So where, where, where's the difference here? Well, first of all, the difference is, is that only Mr. McFadden is saying you don't need to build these converter stations. They're the $1.8 billion uh, biggest expense. Those converter stations are essential. Everybody has agreed that you need them, whether, no matter where you put the hydro line. So the real difference is a half a billion dollars. And if you build your export markets rapidly enough, the export prices will help pay down the cost, just like limestone. And I have to say this, the Conservatives opposed limestone when we built it as well. They said it would be uh, a bust. It was built, it paid itself back in 10 years, and it's generated $6 billion of revenue since that date. It has been a great success in spite of the criticism of the Conservatives. Mr. McFadden. Well, the, the reality is that um, the internal numbers that we've got from Hydro show that every Manitoba family pays $11,748 more. No, show that. Uh, and, it's, and it's very, very clear when you, when you do the math. Uh, what Mr. Selinger has done is he's put out a brochure saying that it won't cost Manitobans a cent. Uh, to build a, a $4.1 right. billion dollar brochure. And I, I encourage Manitobans to read the material that Mr. Selinger is sending out uh, and ask yourself the question, does it make sense when Mr. Selinger says uh, we're going to spend $4.1 billion on a project and yet it won't cost Manitobans a cent? People uh. don't buy it, and they don't buy it because right now 
your government is in front of the Public Utilities Board asking for rate increases. They're asking for rate increases because of the cost of this project, among others. Uh, and so people see those costs going up on their hydro bills today, uh, and they know that when somebody says, we're going to spend over $4 billion on a project, but it's free for Manitobans, they don't buy it, Mr. Selinger. It's a lot like the sort of numbers you were putting out around Crocus, telling the public one thing, uh, when internally the number said something very different. This is no different on this issue, and I think, you, I think you're well aware of that. Uh, the other aspect of this is that uh, a, a former vice president of Hydro uh, recently said that Mr. Selinger was being deceptive in the way he was describing these numbers. And I think it's important for Manitobans to know that the real number is $11,748 per family on their hydro bills paid over a period of time. That, that, those numbers are confirmed, they're backed up by the sworn testimony at the PUB, and uh, the only person who says it's free is Mr. Selinger. Mr. Premier. Uh, you know, the numbers are completely false. It's uh, Hydro itself, uh, through its president and CEO, has said that they're completely false and inaccurate because we need the converter stations regardless of which side of the province you go down. The half a billion dollar difference, uh, Mr. McFadden is correct, will be spread over uh, the entire 60 years of the uh, bipole, and it will cost all the customers of Manitoba Hydro $13 a year. That's the number they've put out, and they've confirmed that at Standing Committee of the Legislature on sworn testimony. What I'm unclear and on is, do you need a converter station under your plan, Mr. McFadden? We, we, we agree with Hydro's capital planning that converter stations are required as you move to the next generation of generating facilities. So when you go to Kiosk and Kahnawapa, which has always been part of the long term plan at Hydro, you need that extra conversion capacity. Uh, what Hydro has said consistently is that the east side plan didn't require converter stations. It was only after Mr. Selinger directed them to go west side that they had to be added to this project. But over the longer term, we agree that converter stations are part of the long-range capital plan after we've signed major power agreements with and, American customers. And, and, and here's the reality. Them. We've just signed a $4 billion power agreement, and we need those converter stations right now, which completely blows Mr. McFadden's number out of the water. When you have the converter stations taken out of the equation, the number drops dramatically to $13 a month for all customers, including families, over the 60 years. That's what Bob Brennan has put in sworn testimony in front of the Standing Committee on Hydro, and independent experts have brought in the number, which includes the converter stations being taken out. So you're down to a half a billion dollars, and that's the real issue here, is you do need the converters. I'm glad Mr. McFadden has finally confirmed that, because that's why we're building Kiosk, and that's why we're going to build Kahnawapa. Those export sales will generate up to $21 billion of revenue over the next 20 years, and they'll keep Manitoba Hydro rates the lowest in North America. I've got one minute before we break here. Sure. Well, Both of you. Um, the, the term sheet with Wisconsin is actually 20% of the one they announced four years ago. It's been cut back by 80% from what Gary Dewar announced four years ago. We want to see those contracts completed and signed so we get that revenue flowing in. When they are, there's going to be a case uh, to be made for building converters. But to go ahead and spend more than $4 billion before you've got firm contracts not only puts ratepayers at risk, but it compromises your bargaining position with our American neighbors. They are, if they know you've already spent the money, Mr. Selinger, and you've got no choice but to sell them power, they are going to take advantage of you in those negotiations. And so sign the agreements and then build the I need assets. to take a break. More of my questions at 9.30. Your calls. This is RCR. Coming up, your calls at 780-6868, pound 680, toll-free and MTS Mobility, 1-800-665-2202. Premier Greg Selinger, opposition leader Hugh McFadden, are our special guests here in what we hope to have several conversations and debates and taking your phone calls as we head into the campaign, the legislature uh, rising last night. And uh, it'll be a long campaign, and we're hoping to spend a lot of time with the candidates and talk about their platforms and uh, the issues and the record as well. Again, we are screening your phone calls. We want you to be tight and bright and to the point. We're not looking for speeches from you. We're looking for specific questions for Mr. McFadden and uh, Selinger here at 780-6868. More questions for you. And, and Premier, it's often been mentioned about this UNESCO World Heritage Site, and we're going after UNESCO. 
Uh, is it part of the deal that this power uh, grid, the uh, the Bipole 3, has to go on the west side because we're not going to get this UNESCO world designation if it goes on the east side? Yes, but just before I get to that, the cost of the converters is $1.8 billion, not $4 billion, as Mr. McFadden has just said. And the, reality, said. and the reality is, is that we need to build them now because there is this enormous risk of all the energy going through the Dorsey Station, 70%. To delay that further puts a $56 billion economy at risk. It just takes one week of those converters to go out to pay for the entire cost of the converters and the transmission line. And the to answer my question. The UNESCO World Heritage Site is a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to protect clean water, clean air, boreal forest, uh, threatened and endangered species, and to do it in a way that will bring uh, ecotourism to Manitoba for generations to come. Not sure you're answering my question, though. What's the question? The question is, does it rely on it going on the west side? Could you not have that east side route and still have UNESCO? Uh, the UNESCO people that we've met with said it would put the designation at risk. It would probably result in it failing. They should not build it down that side. Danny Williams tried to put a power line through uh, the Gross Morn UNESCO World Heritage Site. He was stopped dead in his tracks. Uh, the government of Alberta tried to put hydro lines through uh, UNESCO Banff National Park. It was stopped dead in its tracks. They tried to put hydro lines in British Columbia through major parks with pristine boreal forests in them. They were stopped dead in their tracks. Mr. McFadden, we don't need to make the same mistakes in Manitoba. Do you agree or disagree with that assessment? Well, the first of all, three of the four points Mr. Selinger just made are factually incorrect. Uh, but the the uh, fact on the uh, the mandate of hydro in the government of Manitoba is to provide a reliable, low cost source of energy for the people of Manitoba and for export markets. The long west side route, which adds 500 kilometers to the line and wraps around the city of Winnipeg, uh, compromises the reliability of the line and adds to the cost for, for rate payers. Mr. Selinger said it's worth it uh, for him to get a UNESCO designation. We say, based on the expert advice provided by Jim Collinson, who's a great Manitoban and a former chair of the UNESCO World Heritage Committee, uh, that it is possible to have a transmission line uh, provided it's done properly, uh, done uh, in a way that is consistent with the UNESCO designation. Much the way uh, Banff, which is designated a UNESCO site, has transmission lines, it has highways, uh, it has ski resorts and town sites, but that's a limited part uh, of the total area and provided it's done in a responsible, limited way, uh, we can have both. We can have a reliable power system, we can save every family $11,748, and, uh, and if it's the will of Manitobans, we can have a UNESCO designation. But we don't need to compromise the financial security of Manitoba families. We don't need to compromise the reliability of our power system in order to get a UNESCO designation, which is Mr. Selinger's priority. You know, they just stopped the transmission line through Banff National Park because it was going to compromise the park. Uh, that's the fact of the matter on the ground. Wisconsin has just said, we will classify Manitoba Hydro as a primary premium product, uh, clean and green, if you do it properly. The minute we try to put the hydro lines through the east side, you will have litigation, you will have lawsuits, it will tie the project up for years, uh, it will slow down our ability to serve our export markets, and it will put a $4 billion contract at risk. And the reality is, it's not a term sheet anymore, it's a firm contract. Uh, and we have to build on that. And they're building their transmission lines to get access to Manitoba up to the border. They want us to be there to join with them to provide that clean power. Mr. And McFadden, the best way to do that is if, to do it clean and green. And I want, want to get your response to that just before we go to the calls. But if you were Premier and you were negotiating these deals with Minnesota and Wisconsin, Hydro at the table, and they were telling you, well, wait a minute here. We want that clean power. We're not going to deal with you folks because of uh, the history here, land claims, et cetera, up in northern Manitoba. Would you say, screw you, we're going to sell this to you or try to sell this to you anyway? How would you deal uh, with that as premium? Yeah, I've met with um, power companies in, Miss in Minnesota and Wisconsin. What they want is what we want, reliable power at a reasonable price. Uh, if you, if you uh, are factual rather than deceptive, what you could say to them is that is that the shorter east side line actually cuts through less forest than the west side line. Which it, is, it that avoids, is factually incorrect. It avoids staging areas for migratory birds. It avoids uh, more uh, ranges for, for caribou. Uh, it saves 40 megawatts of clean energy that could be used to reduce the amount of coal being burned in the United States. I would go down to the United States, and I would argue that the short 
efficient, reliable east side line is better for the environment. It's better for you as customers because it's more reliable. We can do it at a lower cost. And I wouldn't be scared off by activists, as Mr. Selinger has been on this file, which is why we're 11 years down the road on the project, and he still hasn't even applied for an environmental license. That is how long this has been held up, not by litigation, not by activists, not by East Side uh, First Nations people, by Mr. Selinger's political interference. Premier, then your calls at 780-6868. You know, the uh, biggest holdup has been the refusal by Mr. McFadden to accept the need for converter stations. They're needed right now to protect domestic supply and export supply. And I was in Minnesota where they passed a law trying to make Manitoba Hydro accountable for the flooding of the 1970s. We had to work very hard to reverse that law to make sure the product that we sell to them retains a good reputation. I met with the legislators of Wisconsin who have just passed a bill that says they will only buy our new clean energy. The minute Mr. McFadden reverses our decision to go down the west side and tries to put it down the east side, he puts that $4 billion contract at risk. He puts $21 billion of sales at risk. He puts the future of Manitoba Hydro at risk. That's how reckless his decision is. The bipolar debate. Richard Cloutier with you with Premier Greg Selinger, opposition leader Hugh McFadden. We ask that you keep your questions, your observations very tight. We want to get as many of your calls in as possible here on CJOB. We begin with Sig. Go ahead, Sig. You're on the superstation. Well, just a question, and it's very interesting to me. I want to unpack that 11,000 whatever number. Uh, whatever the numbers are, uh, it's all been loaded onto the existing number of families in Manitoba today. But, I mean, aren't these costs, whatever they are, aren't they amortized over 50, 60, 70 years? And certainly the number of families is going to change 10 years out, 20 years out, 30 years out. You know, facts and deception. I find that 11,000 number just to be questionable. So isn't it going to be amortized over 60 years? Yes, it is. No, it's not. Uh, hydro doesn't borrow on 60-year terms. The, the life of the line, there will be line losses over 60 years, uh, but, but it's, uh, the terms of, of Hydro's debt are not 60 years. So, uh, in effect, the 11748 is like adding $11,748 to your personal credit line, uh, which you'll pay off over a period of time with interest. In fact, we haven't included interest on it, so it's going to be more than that. Uh, but uh, we're trying to be uh, conservative with the estimate, and so we've assumed 0% interest when, in fact, it'll be more than that. Mr. Premier. The numbers are just dead wrong. You, you take the converter stations out, you've got a half a billion dollar difference spread over 60 years. Uh, hydro finances projects long term, they always have, and it comes out to $13 for every customer in Manitoba. Only one third of those customers are families. So it's really only one, only one third that the families pay. The $13 a year will actually be less than that if we build it fast enough because the exports will pay it down just like they did the Limestone Project. The Limestone Project, which the Conservatives tried to stop, paid itself off in 10 years and has built, generated $6 billion of revenue since that time. We have to build it now. We have to build it to protect domestic supply and to make sure that our product has a clean, green reputation in the international marketplace. Yes, there will be more families in Manitoba. We're a growing population, the best growth in over 40 years. The more families we got, the cheaper it gets for everybody. This is Pam on CJOB 68. Go ahead, Pam. Um, we're, we're pedigreed seed growers. We farm west of Portage of Prairie, Manitoba. Um, for us, um, Bipole 3 is going to be a pain because um, you have your overlap of chemical fertilizer. Um, we have to rogue around these for um, leafy spurge, and um, you're only giving us a one-time compensation um, that you're going to pay us, and for us, it's not enough money. And uh, the other thing is, can <laughs> um, Bipole 3 withstand tornadoes? I was talking to uh, one of the Manitoba Hydro employees, and he said, no, it can't. And we want this stuff put underground. Um, we also live close to agri and fertilizer plant, and we're scared if we get one of these high wind storms, it'll take it down uh, and land on the CN track. Gentlemen, those are all concerns that we've been hearing um, from Manitobans and from hydro engineers. Uh, Mr. Selinger's long western route starts in northeastern Manitoba, goes all the way to the Saskatchewan border crosses and then comes starts coming back east again crosses highway 1 crosses major rail lines crosses highway 75 crosses the red river crosses highway 59 and then wraps up the east side of winnipeg it goes through prime farmland as you have correctly identified it goes into areas where we have unstable weather 
which is why the engineers are worried about the reliability aspect. And so those are all important points in terms of impact on, on farming in our province. Uh, it impacts on the ability to get it done because the number of, of properties to be expropriated uh, is in the hundreds that hydro is going to have to uh, to deal with. Premier Sollinger. Uh, and, well, and for, finally, first I would of just... all, I have to say that there's no expropriations uh, planned at all. Uh, the reality is, is that there will be a compensation payment. It'll be negotiated very uh, fairly and generously with all the property owners. And uh, I urge the uh, caller to continue to negotiate with Hydro. They have every intention of being fair. Uh, weather events occur everywhere in Manitoba. It doesn't change. And hydro lines go over uh, roadways no matter where they go. The reality is the best thing to do is to make sure that the product is wanted in the international marketplace because those export sales keep our prices the lowest in North America. That's what we need to do is get those export sales. The West Side route is the best guarantee of long-term export sales for a clean, green product. Very quickly, then more calls. And I agree with one point Mr. Sellinger has made. We need uh, those export sales. Our export customers pay for reliability. Uh, they pay. Uh, they don't want to pay for wasted power, which is going to happen on the west side, uh, and that's why the east side makes so much sense. Alain, you're on CJOB 68. Go ahead, please. Yes, hello. I'm a master's student in Native Studies, and I am working up on the east side, and I've been up to Blood Vein Barrens and Poplar River and spoken with a lot of the people working on the UNESCO World Heritage Site, and I've spoken to them specifically about roads, but the question I have is uh, the Bill 6, which became the East Side Traditional Lands Planning Act and Special Protected Areas Act, gives those communities more autonomy over land use. None of the land use plans, the one that was approved in Poplar River, the one that was submitted in Blood Vein, include a bipole. So my question is mostly for um, Mr. McFadden. Is he planning to cancel this law? Is he planning to go to court with the First Nations? And has he included those costs in his numbers so that we can find out actually how much it would cost the province to change course and go down the east side. Because, frankly, there's a lot of uh, precedent right now in Supreme Court rulings that say there has to be free and prior informed consent. I don't think, from what I've heard up there, that the Premier, if it is McFadden, would get consent to build a bipole. Mr. McFadden. The east side. Well, firstly, uh, I've traveled through all those same communities. Uh, I met with Chief George Kemp uh, a little while ago, and uh, he was uh, talking about... Uh, the plight of people in his community. You've got communities which are which are isolated. Uh, you've got the highest poverty rates of any communities in North America. And uh, his word uh, was that uh, those East Side communities were devastated by the fact that this uh, the opportunity to get jobs and economic uh, spin-offs from the project had been uh, had been taken away just because the NDP were more interested in getting awards from international groups. Um, Elijah Harper, the former NDP MLA, uh, said that it was a devastating decision. Uh, members of those communities that I've met with uh, have expressed the view that they want a reasonable discussion, find a way to minimize the environmental impact, and find a way to maximize the benefits that flow to some of the poorest communities in the country, and we owe it to them to provide them with better economic opportunities. Will there be opponents uh, to the project? Uh, yes, there will be opponents no matter where you build it. There are hundreds of opponents lining up on the west side. Uh, there were hundreds of people, uh, including uh, uh, members of Mr. Selinger's party, who opposed the floodway when Duff Roblin uh, proposed it, but he went ahead and got it done because you can't please everybody. You've got to get things done for the benefit of the whole province and not spend so all your time... So you would fight it. Bottom line, you would fight it. We, we wouldn't worry about whether we got awards from international environmental groups. We, Mr. We, we would do uh, what was right for well, Manitoba look, families. Look, uh, the caller is absolutely right. That's what I've uh, tried to explain. When they tried to put the bipole or a transmission line through UNESCO World Heritage Site in Newfoundland, Danny Williams was stopped in his tracks. Court cases in British Columbia have stopped transmission lines. In Alberta, they couldn't build it through a uh, UNESCO World Heritage Site. We should learn from the experience of others. We've got to build this thing smart, and we have to do it now so that we can have those export revenues. To do it foolishly is and recklessly is a mistake. And, you know, the people on the east side, the First Nations communities, were promised by Mr. McFadden before the last election they would own the hydro line. And then after the election, he said they couldn't own it. That's why they were disappointed. They were betrayed. Premier, uh, Chris writes at cjob.com, how much are the line losses on the west versus the east routes? Are the customers external to Manitoba going to pay 100% of this difference plus the difference in capital cost? That from Chris. Well, that's, uh, it is a higher... Selinger first, oh, then you, sorry? sir. 
Yeah, the uh, the additional cost is about a hundred million dollars in today's dollars for the entire time that there's line losses uh, between the east side and the west side. That's the today's dollars uh, uh, that would be extended over the entire time. Not every year, a hundred million dollars in total. We've already spent a hundred million dollars getting the line ready to be built down the west side, and we're going to flush that money away. That would be a huge mistake. We will never get it built on the east side. Every experience in Canada shows that it's not doable. It won't happen. It'll get tied up in litigation and lawsuits and will frustrate the development of Manitoba Hydro even further and hurt its reputation. Mr. McFadden. Yeah, just to clean up um, one of the uh, mistakes that Mr. Selinger just made, the Alberta line that he's referring to was stopped because it was going through prime um, ranching and agricultural land. Uh, and, uh, and that's exactly what Mr. Selinger wants to do with the West Side Line. But on the issue of line losses, I find it interesting now Mr. Selinger is saying it's only going to cost $100 million uh, to Manitoba families, the, the line losses on the, uh, on the West Side. Well, you know, $100 million may not seem like a lot of money to you, Mr. Selinger, but to Manitoba families who are working hard to pay their hydro bills, that's real money. Uh, in addition to that, I find it interesting that now this is, I think, the sixth different number you've put out on this. Hydro said that it was $200 million the last time uh, they testified on the issue. Other uh, engineers say it's $300 million. Uh, you've said uh, at various points in time that the average, Mr. Brennan said the average family would pay $800 more on the west side, not including line losses, so you have to add to that. Uh, you've uh, said in your brochure that it'll be free, that Manitobans won't pay a penny. Then you just said it'll be $13. Uh, so you've got five different numbers out there right now when the uh, clear number coming out of Hydro's own documents is 11748 per family. Mr. That, Selinger. That number has never appeared in any Hydro documents. That's a complete fiction of the uh, Mr. McFadden's uh, imagination. The reality is they did an independent study uh, so that they could clear up the confusion created by Mr. McFadden. They said that the additional cost would be half a billion dollars over 60 years, $13 for all customers in Manitoba on an annual basis, $13 on an annual basis over the 60 years. If we build it earlier, just like we did limestone, the earlier we build it, the more export reven revenues we have to pay it down before we need the power in Manitoba. Limestone paid itself off in 10 years and has gener generated $6 billion of profits. So the point is, let's not delay it. Let's not tie it up in litigation. Let's not tie it up in lawsuits, which is going to happen if you go down the east side. We can learn from the experience elsewhere. We can build it smart. We can build it clean. We can build it now. Wrapping up with our two guests here, Premier Greg Selinger and Hugh McFadden, the opposition leader on Bipole 3, as we continue this Friday morning on CJOB 68. 9.45 on CJOB 68 by Poll 3 debate. The Premier Greg Selinger, the opposition leader, Hugh McFadden, and this is Kathy on CJOB 68. Thank you for joining us, Kathy. Go ahead, please. Hi. My question is, if there's any doubts, why not bring in a third party for another opinion, which maybe would maybe settle some people's minds? It's a, it's a very good question. That's why we, uh, Hydro brought in uh, independent uh, experts to look at the price so we could get a number, and that number was a half a billion dollar difference for the, uh, for the buy poll. And that's why we had the Farlinger report, which was done by a very respected engineer in Manitoba to look at uh, the issues of east side, west side. And Farlinger said this was a question of public policy, and the government should make, express its views on that so that the best interests of Manitobans would be looked after. And he argued that the east side had a huge reputational risk to Manitoba Hydro, and if they lost their reputation, they could lose their sales. You know, I think we have to, and I think the point is a good one as well. I mean, it's not uh, a matter of the, the opinions of politicians. Let's go right back to what the engineers and the experts say. Uh, we got a leaked memo, which we'll make which were making public, uh, made public yesterday, uh, drafted in 2000 by the uh, Systems Planning Department within Manitoba Hydro uh, to the head of the Environmental Transmission Planning and Design Department. This is an internal hydro memo, and this is what it says. This memorandum will serve to confirm that line routing for a Bipole 3 transmission line must be on the east side of Lake Winnipeg to satisfy system security and economic viability 
requirements. These are two of the top experts uh, within Manitoba Hydro writing to one another, not for the purpose of public debate, not for the purpose of scoring political Who points. Who signed that, de- uh, by, by the way? Well, it was C.V. Theo, manager of system, the system planning department, and I'll provide the, the memo. We'll make it public. It's addressed to another uh, internal engineer. So that's what the experts say. Well, hold uh, and Go I ahead. think that we should... I think the uh, question was, why aren't we taking an independent look at it, which is why the Farlinger report was commissioned uh, by Manitoba Hydro. They have, there's lots of... And it's no secret that engineers inside Manitoba Hydro thought that it should go down the east side. There was a time when engineers thought we should flood the north. We don't flood the north anymore. We don't build through boreal forests. When an independent expert who was an engineer, very well regarded, took a look at it, he said there are serious issues of reputational risk on building it on the east side. He also said there are issues on the other side. He'd had a very balanced report. At the end of the day, he believed that the government should weigh in on it as a matter of public policy. Government has done that in the best interests of future uh, hydro sales and all the interests of Manitobans. Well, first point, Mr. Selinger thinks that transmission lines cause flooding, and they don't. Nobody's ever built a transmission Never line said that's that. flooded anybody. Secondly, the issue of, uh, of the uh, expertise, uh, there are now, by our count, at least 40 current practicing engineers in the province of Manitoba who understand environmental sensitivities, yeah. who are saying that the east side is absolutely the least harmful environmentally, the best from a reliability standpoint, and the best from a but, cost but the caller standpoint. asked for whether there was an independent review. That was done by the well, Farlinger report, which said the reputational risk on the east side could kill off export sales, well, that's not which would jack said. up the rates. That's it's exactly what it it's said. Not it what said it there's said. a very significant reputational risk on the east side, which is an intact boreal forest. Okay. That's what the Farlinger report well, said. Okay. That was the only independent report done. We know what the engineers think, We've uh, and we respect engineers, but they're not the impartial third parties that the caller was asking. 949. On CJOB 68, we'll wrap up with the two in a moment. Gentlemen, an hour with you goes very, very quickly. We thank you for putting a lot of this on the record. I'm not sure we've made it clear for folks here, but we have three months to debate this and other issues as we head into the campaign. And uh, I asked uh, both the leaders to pick a number and uh, Hugh McFadden picked the right number six here and gave him the choice to go first or last. He is going last here, 90 seconds for each of you, beginning with Premier Greg Selinger. We have an opportunity to build hydro for the future with a clean, green reputation. We also have an opportunity to have a world-class UNESCO World Heritage Site that will bring uh, ecotourism and benefits to Manitoba for generations to come. Both of those things can be done if we do it right. We've seen in the United States, they're passing new laws that will only buy Manitoba Hydro if it's clean and green. They won't buy the hydro that was built when flooding was done in the 1970s. We have to be smart about how we do it. We have to build it uh, so that the reputation stays strong and that $21 billion of revenues over the next 20 years flows to Manitoba so we can keep the lowest hydro rates in North America. Today, we've had for the first time acknowledgement that the converter stations are needed when we build new hydro generating dams. We're building those new dams right now. Kiosk is up and running. We need those uh, converter stations. And we also have to keep Manitoba Hydro a publicly owned corporation. The the NDP, our government has a strong commitment uh, in law to keep uh, Manitoba Hydro as a publicly owned corporation. We can't take the risk of losing it through privatization by running it down and uh, stopping it and 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 tying it up in lawsuits. We saw the same thing happen with the telephone system. Uh, They tied it up in knots and then they sold it off. We want to keep it public, we want to keep it with a good reputation, and we want to keep the lowest rates in North America. Hugh McFadden. Well, as I said at the beginning of this uh, discussion, our reliable public Manitoba Hydro, the one that we all know so well today, was built up by the Duff Roblin Progressive Conservative Government and has been strengthened by successive premiers, including those like Ed Schreier and others. Uh, By 2000, which was 11 years ago, Hydro was ready to move on to the next stage in its development, uh, which was to build a transmission line down the east side of Lake Winnipeg. But Mr. Selinger's political interference has now set us back by 11 years. As Hydro Minister and now Premier, Mr. Selinger spent the last 11 years delaying the construction of this essential lifeline. The numbers from internal hydro reports and sworn testimony show that Mr. Selinger's far west side route will cost every Manitoba family $11,748, compromise the reliability of our hydro system, and will have no environmental benefit, and in fact, 
may do environmental harm. If you share our view and you'd like to join the thousands of Manitobans who, who are concerned about this decision, uh, I'd encourage you to go to the website, 11748.net, to get more information. And I'd also encourage you to read the Farlinger report that Mr. Selinger is talking about for yourself so that you can see why uh, former VPs of Hydro are saying that he's being deceptive on this issue. So this is about the future of Hydro. Is it run by Manitobans? Or is it run by international activists? Is it a reliable company or is it unreliable? Is it a low-cost uh, hydro source so or is it a high-cost source? You get to decide, and uh, we really appreciate the opportunity to have this debate. Gentlemen, I thank you both for joining us this morning. I appreciate your time. Thanks for having us, Richard. It's a good debate. Thanks a lot, Richard. The first of what I hope many to come. <laughs> this is RCR.